Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to one of the most important transits of this year. In fact, in my opinion, this is the most important transit of this year. Yes, it is not Saturn. It is not Rahu Ketu's transit, which will happen in September. And it is also not Jupiter's transit, which will happen in Capricorn by the end of this year. It is not the retrogression of Venus. It is not even the retrogression of Mars that is going to happen in this year. And neither it is the retrogression of Jupiter, Saturn and Mercury. It is this transit which, in my opinion, is the most important transit of this year, 2020. Why? Because Mars is going to transit that exact zodiac sign, those exact nakshatras, that exact degree where the recent eclipse has happened. And the Mars is also going to uh, transit that Sagittarius Gemini axis where we all we are going to have another uh, eclipse this summer, right? So therefore, Mars is a very important planet when it comes this, to this year, 2020. It is the most important planet almost. Therefore, it is very crucial that we understand how we should behave during this transit because uh, this transit can force us to behave in ways which we regret later. So therefore, we should know what are the things that could come to us and who will be affected more by this transit. When I say affected, I don't mean... Uh, uh, you will die or some terrible accident will happen or you'll be fired from your job. It's not like that. What happens to you will be, uh, will depend on your own horoscope. Which dashas you are running and where are the dasha lords placed? But for this transit, you can see if you are running the dashas of Mars, or Rahu or Ketu, then you will be very intensely affected by this transit. Which means either you are running the Mahadasha or Antardasha or Pratyantardasha. Not so much Pratyantra, I would say, but still, not even the Mahadasha, I would say. If you are running Antardasha of either Mars or Rahu or Ketu, either of these three, then you are likely to be affected by this more. That is why if you are running the Antardasha of these, any of these three or Mahadasha or Pratyantara also, then it is highly crucial that we uh, take note of this transit. And of course, for this transit, you should <clears throat> also watch uh, the Vimshotri. Apart from Vimshotri, you should watch your Chala Dasha. Okay, recently I had a great recording with uh, Shikha Makhija ji for her channel where I had uh, elaborately spoken on Dashas. So, in that I had spoken that the Chala Dasha is very important. That tells you what, how would you perceive things at a soul level. And generally I have seen whenever Rahu Ketu is involved or there is any eclipse or there is any conjunction, it always happens that somehow we tend to feel that it is blown outside of our proportion. It is blown to such an extent that um, even if you try our best, we can't solve it. And therefore, if you are running the chara dasha of the signs where these transits are happening, okay, so then you may be affected by this more. So which means if you, because Chara Dashas are sign-based Dashas, remember, okay, they are not planetary Dashas, they are sign-based Dashas. So therefore, if by any means you are running the Dasha of any dual sign, because the, the planets which are in dual signs aspect the other dual signs according to Gemini, okay, according to Charadasha's principle. So therefore, Mars and Ketu 
up till 23rd of March almost, they are going to be in the sign of Sagittarius, opposed by Rahu in the sign of Gemini. So, from there, these three planets in transit will be aspecting the signs of Virgo and Pisces also. So, Rahu will aspect Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces and Mars and Ketu will aspect Gemini, Virgo and Pisces. So therefore, if you are running the uh, Chara Mahadasha, because Chara Dasha is also like there is Mahadasha and then there are Antara Dashas. So if you are running the Chara Antara Dasha of any dual sign, so if you are running Pisces Dasha or Virgo Dasha or Gemini Dasha or Sagittarius Dasha, then you will be affected by this more. And if you are specifically running the Chara Dashas of either Sagittarius or Gemini or Chara Mahadasha of either of these two, then you will also be affected by this more, even more than uh, Pisces or uh, Virgo because the conjunction is happening here exactly. Okay. And of course, if you are running the Dasha of Sagittarius, then this is going to be the most intense for you. Okay, and therefore it is highly crucial that you check your own horoscope, which dashas you are running. You have to you have to learn to combine the dashas and then see the results of the transits. First, you have to check in Vimshottari which dashas you are running. Okay, and there are many factors by which you can determine the results. And after that, you go to Chara Dasha. You see what Chara Dasha is saying. And then after that, you also have to check what Yogini Dasha is telling. Okay. So I have not spoken much about these Dashas and I will very soon start to speak. Because that is how you can exactly pinpoint events and know what things will happen in the future or what things I should work on. So therefore, this is like a... a this is like a sketch. If you are running the Dashas of these planets or these signs, as I mentioned, then most likely you will be affected uh, by it uh, even more, okay? So therefore, this transit is very important because why do, why, why do I say this transit is the most important transit of the year? Because this Sagittarius and Gemini axis has been quite intense since last December, on 25th December also, on 24th and 25th. Last year, 2019, there were six planets in Sagittarius. And of course, uh, what nothing, uh, there was no disaster that day or there was no fall from the heavens that day. But it was just that um, people, according to their own horoscopes, were feeling that day. Okay, these two days, especially three days, I was 24, 25, 26. And now, Mars is coming and joining in this, okay. So, although the planets have left Sagittarius, Venus has entered Pisces, I mean. <laughs> but now Mars is entering. So, what is Mars basically? See, Mars is a very important planet because, especially in Kali Yuga, it is very important. Because, remember, Mars, who is Mars? He is the Senapati. He is the commander-in-chief of the sun, of the king. So, therefore, his desire is he will go and rule everybody. He will go and kill everybody who doesn't agree to what he says. Okay. So, therefore, whatever we keep seeing in the sign of Sagittarius related to our life or the sign of Gemini because of these eclipses and uh, these uh, conjunctions and transits will now start showing their effects at a physical sense, because Mars is physical. It's a, it is full of tamas, actually. Okay, It is tamas. Tamas means very gross. It's full of ignorance. Ignorance means, okay, I want this my way, that's it. My way or highway. <laughs> but Jupiter is not like that. He's a sattvic planet, which means, okay, I like it this way. You will like it this way. Let's do it like this. Okay. So therefore, now that quest finally will start, we will start pursuing that quest. 
and what is the test that you will pursue that will depend on which houses mars is ruling in your chart depending on your ascendant your lagna your rising sign okay again not the moon sign not chandra rashi it's your lagna rashi okay because the the lords the houses which are planet lords are like the uh, responsibilities of that house it shows the agenda so whenever you talk of mars in any horoscope you have to check which houses he rules as per your ascendant okay suppose he rules fifth house then you know his agenda is children or you know, creativity love romance affair all these things suppose he rules the seventh house then you know it's marriage you know, or business deals contracts partnerships you know, doing things with others all right so everybody knows the basics of astrology so you know which house mars is ruling in your chart and mars rules two houses okay so the houses which mars rules will show the agenda and the houses where he is transiting itself will show the resources which he is getting to fulfill the agenda of that house which he rules so imagine i am sitting in this room and i have a problem in this room okay my light is not working or my laptop is not working then what will i do i will go out from this place yes i have a i have my own agenda my agenda is my home should be proper and then i go out i go to some shop to some electrical shop or to any any shop where i can find a replacement for the bulb or the fan or the ac or the heater which is not working in my home so therefore i will try to find different resources to fulfill the agenda of my own house because that is my duty that is my responsibility so people say the lordships of a planet are more important or the house where he is sitting well both are important because both uh, both of them will show how to what extent uh you will be in harmony so for example if a planet is lording a particular house that means he has certain agendas pertaining to that house but suppose he is transiting in a difficult place then he you know he is not able to fulfill the agenda of his own house so he is not happy he is in distress but similarly if a planet is transiting in a good place for that particular house which he rules then uh, the agenda is fulfilled very good the planet is very happy it's delighting basically so that is how you know so when this uh, mars ketu conjunction is there and rahu is opposed okay so whenever any planet conjoins ketu there is a sense of confusion and headlessness which comes by default so that will depend on which houses mars rules in your chart okay and not only that it will also depend on which planetary dashas you are running and where is mars placed in your original birth chart where is jupiter placed because jupiter is the dispositor of sagittarius of mars especially sorry not sagittarius he is the lord of sagittarius and mars will transit sagittarius where it will enter mula nakshatra and then go to purvashada then it will go to uttarashada so now mars in sagittarius there is going to be a fight of ideals beliefs what is right what is wrong that is the war which because wherever mars transits he wages war there <laughs> and sagittarius is the sign of war if you see the sign of sagittarius the centaur he is like red on and i'm like chuk <laughs> i will hit him man i will hit that goal so therefore when mars enters mula nakshatra especially the first two weeks from this transit then that is the time we will we will start to realize that there is a need to fight a war now war doesn't mean you will go on go and take a gun and you will shoot somebody okay 
it's basically it is basically referring to a solution which is required which can be born out of a sense of uh, despondency or a sense of uh, entitlement also sometimes or a sense of uh, unfulfillment inside so you may think that oh i am not fulfilled in this area which area the houses which marks rules regarding those areas and then what should i do now well i will go and wage a war so in mula nakshatra you will not actually wage the war when mars is in mula nakshatra in transit then you will realize that i need to wage a war if i don't wage i will be finished my existence is under threat that is what mars will do in mula nakshatra then when it enters purva shada then you will finally wage the war then you know now if i don't fight i will die i must fight now so it can be any battle it can be a internal battle it can be a external uh, it can be some external challenge that you will that you will want to solve you will finally want to clear it and when you do that that is the time you will after it after that when it enters uttara shada you will encounter victory or you will encounter defeat so people think uttara shada is about victory no it is also about defeat because when two people are fighting one is victorious and the other is defeated so it never happens that both of them wins or both of them loses of course at a spiritual level it can happen win win situation but when it comes to the mundane materialistic uh, society it is like that somehow it's the game of mars and saturn mars hits and then saturn comes saturn is you know suffering mars is the pleasure when you get when you uh, prove to somebody that you are better than them and saturn is the sorrow which you get when somebody proves to you that they are better than them they are better than you so mars is sorrow basically uh, so, sorry this mars and saturn both of them shows sorrow and you know so they also show revenge or oh, this person give me sorrow now i will give him or her revenge back so therefore uh, this these 45 days it is highly essential that we do not get into these unnecessary battles of trying to prove our agenda to everybody else yes so this month is a very good time to uh, check our own self esteem so those people who have low self esteem will what they will do is during this month they will go on and they will start waging a war against everybody against anybody and everybody who says no to what they want or what they think is right okay because uh, if you have a healthy self esteem high self esteem or i would say good self esteem then you know that if i think something is right or if i know this is right then for me that's right i don't have to go on proving to anybody yes but if you if you have doubts on yourself on your own self uh on your own self esteem then yes you have to get that validation from outside you have to prove it to 10 people that you are better than them in that area of life and because of that what he will do you will do show off you will boast about yourself you will try to prove that how you are more smart you are more experienced you are more powerful you have many contacts you can do this you can do that and at the end of the day you will end up damaging yourself yes mars is the planet which damages things not only others it damages ourselves also because it's a tamasic planet okay so therefore we have to realize that this these 45 days is a very good time to check how do we feel about ourselves basically because if you don't feel good about your life about your or the things that you are doing about the things that you know you should be doing then you will be miserable because now you will feel the need to wage the wage a war now waging a war is not bad but the problem is it should not be waged because of selfish interests okay so for example uh, krishna had waged uh, duryodhan had waged this war 
against the Pandavas. When Krishna came as Shanti Dut, Krishna said, just give five villages to the Pandavas. But then Duryodhan said, no, I won't give them anything, not even that much piece of land which can come in the tip of a needle. Even that I won't give. So he waged a war because of his selfish, egoistic, greedy interests and he perished later on. And with him Bhishma perished, Drona perished, his all brothers and whoever was there with him perished. Even the people in the side of the Pandavas perished, you know, the five sons of Draupadi, they were killed. Subhadra's son Abhimanyu was brutally massacred. So that's what happens when we wage wars. So war is never, never, never the solution. War is the last. Krishna said to the Pandavas, this, it is the last resort. And when that was the need of the hour, Krishna himself told Arjuna, my dear Arjuna, get up and fight. That is what Krishna says. And then Arjuna is like, yes. Sthitosmi gata sandeha karishye vachanam tava. I will do what you said. Nashto moha smriti labdhva. Tat prasadan maya chuta. Sthitosmi gata sandeha karishye vachanam tava. This is what Arjuna says to Krishna at the end. So some people say that uh, Bhagavad Gita is like, oh, Krishna has told and you know, you can still do whatever you like. You can be like dogs or cats or like animals, you know, you can do whatever you want. But that's stupid actually. They, they have zero knowledge of the Gita. They have just read it theoretically. They have not read it from a bona fide guru. And because of their uh, sense of headlessness, they are just roaming like uh, animals without knowing anything. Well, that is that is not what uh, you should do after reading the Gita. You should see what Arjuna has done. Sthitosmi gata sandeha karishye vachanam tava. I will do what you have said. So if somebody thinks that after reading the Gita, oh, I can just do whatever I want, you know, after all, it's my life. <laughs> then you have simply wasted your time, just doing nothing basically. All right. So yeah, it pinches. I know many people don't like to hear these things. They they feel that ah, aisa kyu bola hai. <laughs> but yeah, that's the fact. So many people I see. All right. So. Wage a war. Do what is required, but don't waste time proving yourself. You, If you know who you are, then you don't have to prove yourself to anybody. Not to anybody. Not to your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, your children. Nobody. Nobody means nobody. And what to speak of outsiders. Okay. And if you are confident that you are not good inside, or your life is not good, then, well, that is what you are going to do. You are going to wage a war against every single person that you meet, or especially regarding the houses which Mars rules, okay? And all these things will manifest according to the house uh, where Sagittarius falls from your Lagna. Okay, so Sagittarius, suppose Sagittarius is your 10th house, then all these this game will start from the 10th house, which means the manifestation, the fruit is coming from there. So, in the 10th house, re related to the issues of the 10th house will come up and because of that, you will see this drama happening. Okay, 11th house, then same finances and all this. Okay, that is it from my side. So, therefore, keep your calm. Uh, don't think that you have to achieve everything in the next 45 days. Life is long. <laughs> you, you can hit a lot of sixes in cricket, but uh, in the name of hitting sixes, don't forget that uh, you should also remain not out. Because if you go and you run and then you your stump is out one day, then you cannot bat anymore. All right. So make runs, hit fours, hit sixes, or hit twos, ones, threes. <laughs> but make sure you remain not out. Because if you are out, then you're out. <laughs> All right. Life does not give you a replay button. Remember that. So do not do things which your future self will regret. Don't say those words to those people. 
because of which they may say 10 years back later 10 years later that 10 years back you told me this you spoke like this i still remember all right let us not be ashamed of our actions after uh, in the future all right and yes there could be difficulties depending on your horoscope but if you remain strong inside and keep doing your spiritual practices then you will be able to cross over these challenges they will not matter okay and if you are simply drowning in the uh, ocean of materialistic anxiety and pleasure then well all the best <laughs> All right, thank you very much for your patience and uh, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it and if you want a personalized consultation for this transit from me, then you can go to my website down in the description section. You will find it there. You will find the link there, okay? God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him all the best.